you all doing tonight donald trump has been raided (laughs) so this is breaking news um i've only seen headlines so we're gonna read through this together learn about what the hell's going on also have uh you know see what cable news is saying i already saw a clip from fox news (laughs) freaking out oh my god all right fun fun stuff um it, all right before i you know there, there's there's too much there's too much let me just go down here so this is i, I just pulled up the guardian because they're you know they're not the washington post donald trump says fbi raided his mar-a-lago home in a statement the ex-president described the incident as an unannounced raid and did not specify what was taken Hmm. So federal investigators searched the contents of Donald Trump's safe at his Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida. The former president said in a statement on Monday, the latest indication of an intensifying criminal investigation by the Justice Department into his affairs. The FBI executed a search warrant around 6 p.m. Eastern at at Trump's residence, which appears to have been related to an investigation into Trump's unlawfully taking White House documents with him to Mar-a-Lago after his presidency, according to a source familiar with the matter. I will say, 6 p.m., he got lucky. They really should have done like a 2 a.m., 3 a.m. raid. That would have been great. But uh, going on here, quote, my beautiful home, Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach, Florida, is currently under siege, raided, and occupied by a large group of FBI agents. Trump said in a bitter statement, lashing out at the raid, adding, they even broke into my safe. (laughs) During his presidency, Mar-a-Lago was known as Trump's winter White House. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The raid comes as Trump has been laying the foundations for another presidential... Yeah, so there was some worry, a lot of worry, that uh, he was going to preemptively announce his run for president, and then once he did that, you know, the DOJ would be afraid to get involved because it would be viewed as political. But, hey, they're going forward. They're doing this. I'm going to pull up some clips. We'll even maybe get a live shot of Fox News, see the breakdown as it happens. Here is, uh, so Jesse Waters, I guess, is on when this is happening. It's going into the home of a former president, Buck Saxon here, joins me now, former CIA officer. You're going into the the home of a presidential candidate. Uh, He hasn't announced yet, but everybody assumes he's running for president. And this is after they went after his campaign with wiretaps. He hasn't even announced. Like, God, the shit that they will say. Like, just to make it seem like it's it's political. He has not announced. He's not running. There's speculation. He just because there's speculation doesn't. And even if he was running, by the way, who gives a fuck? But he's not. And they still act like it's being it's, it's it's a political act. Ridiculous. Went after his campaign with wiretaps and other federal investigative raids. This is insane, Buck. Jesse, it almost feels like a preemptive coup. We've heard so much about the insurrection and the coup, but this is preventing. This is meant to prevent Donald Trump from being able to run again. Maybe he broke the law. Maybe the law should be applied equally, regardless of who you are. Here they are openly calling for different rules depending on who the individual is. The more powerful you are, if you think you're running for president, you cannot be investigated. Meanwhile, what do you think they'd be saying if this was Hillary Clinton (laughs) or Hunter Biden or Joe Biden? Like, give me a freaking break. Just pure bullshit. At least I'm consistent here. Investigate everyone. I don't give a fuck. (laughs) Investigate them all. 
Let's see what other what other clips are being shared here. It's a really scary evening. Let's go to Dan Bongino. Oh, Dan Bongino. Let's go to Dan Bongino, the host of Unfiltered on Saturday nights. Dan, your quick emotional reaction. I think everyone's a little emotional here uh, about this raid. Yeah, I mean, you think this is some third world bullshit right here. <laughs> Let me say it again. Third world bullshit. I mean, every word of that. I don't care that it's cable news. I it's really third world bullshit. The way he's viewing it would be letting these dictators really get away with their garbage, not investigating people that are powerful. But of course, there's no consistency. None of it makes any sense. More freaking out here. Distraction? Are they trying to distract us from the horrific e economy? Are they trying to distract us from the the loss of wages and the loss of jobs and the recovery that was thwarted by uh, his trillion dollar rescue plan right out of the gate? I mean, th just we have to ask these questions because all of the stuff that they've ever didn't they just look? I'm a, I'm massively critical of Biden and the Democratic Party, but. Didn't they just have like a record number jobs? <laughs> She's like complaining about this. Yes, yeah, so wages are an issue. They've been an issue for decades. Trump didn't do shit about that. Like this is all this is all garbage. Ever accused Trump of so far they have not provided any kind of substance to back up these claims. And I'm I'm tired of hearing about Mo Russia and I'm tired of hearing about Comey is coming. No substance. You have to be purposely blind to not at the bare minimum, he's been doing witness tampering. That's been out in the open. He's been texting people who are supposed to be going in front of uh, in front of the committee and pressuring them not to talk. That's 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 just what is out in the open and clear and obvious from the text messages they have. But like, give me a freaking break. Uh, I've I've gone over it. maybe in a minute here. I'll go over um, what he potentially may be uh, or could be charged with. But let's finish this clip. Comey never came. He left. And guess what? All of this stuff with Russia looks more to implicate the Bidens than it ever did Trump. I'm so tired of this tantrum from this party. All right. Well, there, we're going to have more details on this. <laughs> the reality is, the reality is, DeSantis is a much better candidate for them than Trump is. I, I really think Trump is the only Republican that could lose to, to Joe Biden um, because he's already lost to him. So... Uh, like they should, maybe they're just, you know, this is just a performance for all. I mean, it is, it is a performance, but if they have any brains at all, they should realize that DeSantis is, is much better for uh, their team if that's all they care about. And that clearly is all they care about. In America, they're laughing. I just want to say in closing, listen, America, they're laughing at you. The left thinks this is hilarious. If you doubt me, just go to any of their goofy platforms, Twitter or elsewhere right now. They think this is hilarious. You know what? He's right. <laughs> Maybe the most accurate thing that has ever been spoken um, by this dipshit. He's exactly right. Exactly right. It is hilarious. Any just yeah, they, they're getting like just every... Everybody on to, to just bitch about this. I'll go to a live, I'll go to, uh, I don't know, Fox News or MSNBC in a second here, or CNN, see what they're saying, but. See, this is absolutely unprecedented. There, I don't know of any justification that they can possibly do this. And the other question I have is, where is the Secret Service? You know what, these are two different, uh, Department of Justice, yes, but Homeland Security, you're there to protect the president. I, I want to see the security clearances of each one of those FBI agents that dared to go onto those grounds. And if the, F if the FBI overstepped their bounds, why isn't the Secret Service doing their job? Yeah, we're learning. See, this is what? what does that even mean? Their job is to what? Protect the former president? Even if he is being investigated by <laughs> the Department of Justice? Is that the job? No matter what, protect former presidents, regardless of if they, if they broke the law or not. These people are ridiculous. <clears throat> oh, Jesus. Now, 
actually as something to bludgeon people who disagree with them politically, you're undermining our institutions. This is undermining our faith in the, not only the peaceful transfer of power, but in the executive arm of the government under an opposition party not to act like the Stasi, not to act like the secret police that we've seen in totalitarian regimes. This is crazy. Nothing secret about this. The, <laughs> the committee has been on television in prime time, breaking down bit by bit. And by the way, I was someone who was skeptical of how, how planned was this really? It seemed like kind of, you know, this, this crowd just, you know, people, when, when rowdy people get together, they do crazy shit. It just seemed like that's what it was to me at the time. But no, if you watch, if you see what's been going on, all the evidence, Trump had planned to march with them to the Capitol. He had planned to do that. The only reason he didn't is because his Secret Service drove him back to the White House. Even though he was tr he was trying, he was angry, he was yelling at them to, to bring him to the Capitol. They would not do it. The people around him saved him from an even potentially worse outcome for him. But... These people, they, and they know this, all of these freaking fools, they all know this, all these tools understand this, and they're all just lying on a, like, this is, this is blatantly, blatant lies here. There's even, like, Brett Baer on Fox News has even pointed out the obvious trouble that Trump is in, and, and, and obviously, you know, Chris Wallace, who isn't there anymore, but he was a former Fox News guy, same thing, he's been pointing this garbage out, this is, even conservatives understand this. But this is the Trump sycophant network, apparently. I mean, everyone has to understand, they, they ordered a raid on former President Trump's home based on what? In, in what world would they not have been able to go to court and get the documents that they right. want? In what world? I mean, what's next? But look, they did this. Remember Trump flushed documents down the toilet. <laughs> That's like, you really expect them to just give up whatever, uh, whatever is going to incriminate them, like, give me a freaking break. The fact that it took this long is, is the real travesty here. This should have happened a long time ago. All right, let's, uh... This, I'm sure he'll hand it over, but you don't kick in the door. You do not kick in the door like that. I think we have to also take this as now. I would love to go back and see what um, some of these individuals said about the cops breaking into people who were innocent, breaking into their homes uh, and murdering them, raiding them. But when it's the former president who clearly broke the law, you don't kick down the door. Now, a li there's a likelihood that they're going to try to bring a federal indictment against former President Trump. Yeah, I, 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 this, I'm sure he'll hand it over, but you don't <clears> kick it. I just want to see something. Anyways, while I search this up, I will find, let's see, um, who should we check out? Maybe just do Fox News Live, because it's, it's the most... The most uh, comical. Or legal basis for the raid. Do we know specifically? Was this about those confidential materials, the alleged classified material that were in boxes taken to Mar-a-Lago, or was this connected to the congressional investigation around January sixth? We have not been able to pinpoint that just yet. We know that there was back and forth between work. Trump administration officials and the National Archives over fifteen boxes of material. We do know that. What we haven't confirmed just yet is whether that is the reason for the raid that happened at Mar-a-Lago today. So we are working to uh, button that up, but that is the latest information that we've seen in terms of that New York Times report. So we wanted to provide it to our audience and let our viewers decide for themselves what they think of that. So not entirely clear whether this is related to the hearings on Capitol Hill, the subsequent investigation that's taking place at the Justice Department, interviewing former Trump administration officials about his final weeks in office, 
exactly why they're doing this at this particular time. But there's a lot going on, obviously, on Capitol Hill and over at the Justice Department. Oh, my God. Leading to a raid of his Mar-a-Lago home today, Will. And as of tonight, no comment so far from the FBI or the DOJ. Mike Emanuel, thank you so much for the latest. Thank you. Okay, you heard is... Mike say there <laughs> that this will be up to the American people, you watching, to decide what... Hold up. There we go. They're probably streaming this online right now because it's so crazy. Let me find uh, a better stream than, uh, than that. Anyways, how do you all think? About, <laughs> how do you all feel about this? I mean, nothing's really happened yet. So, you know, got to wait a little bit. But Master Master B says Fred Trump must have must have been a shaman. Donald is tree son. <laughs> oh God. Very nice, very nice. Teach him for simply trying to get to the bottom of well-known corruption in Ukraine. Let's not forget the completely fabricated story about Russian bounties that was dropped right before the election. Let's not forget the assertion that the Hunter Biden scandals, well-documented on video, were Russian disinformation. And let's not also forget that the sitting president of the United States is completely, as far they are as we freaking know, out. being held harmless for how he benefited from his son's business dealings. Where is the special counsel to look into how every penny of that income was handled by the Biden family, was handled by Biden, reported by Biden, and classified by Biden? It's not happening because, again, we have a branch, a division of government that has decided, throwing back to the eons before in the Roman Empire, that they can decide, that they are the guardians of the empire, they can decide who leads us and who doesn't. This is an unprecedented development for this country, and I would say nothing like this has happened, as far as I'm aware, in any other of our developed peers. And what, therefore, do you think, Stephen, will be the fallout? You just laid out beautifully the power of allegation. You laid out beautifully the power of investigation. What occurred over the last four years amounted to nothing. We know the facts. We know what ended up or what did not end up. In conclusion, with all of those allegations and all of that investigation to Donald Trump in Russia, but the power of that investigation and that power of that allegation captured, held hostage America and a presidency for the better part of four years. Now you have a new investigation. You have a new allegation, Stephen. What happens? What's the fallout? The, the only recourse that I can see in the near term, there'll obviously have to be a cleaning house in 2025. Cleaning house. In the house. near term, there needs to be such a large majority elected this guy in the is a house loser. that they will have unquestioned ability to not only subpoena, but to impeach any and every official who is involved in wrongdoing, both current and past, and to ensure that we finally uncover the truth about who was involved in each and every one of the scandals and misinformation campaigns I just walked through. Because, as you said, the damage and investigation and what's the downside? <laughs> what's the problem here? I don't see the problem. To live under the clouds for years of these fake investigations is not merely an attack on Donald J. Trump, but an attack on every single American who participated in democracy to make him president. Stephen, I want to ask you this as, as we end our conversation. I can't help but note that this is a day as well when Congress has passed a bill to expand the IRS enforcement yes. agency by 87,000 new agents. You know, I think the burden of proof for the DOJ on this allegation, this investigation into Donald Trump is going to be more than the burden of proof in a court of law. The American people have lost trust in institutions, media, science, medical, FBI, intelligence agencies. Because they represent the powerful, not because they go after the powerful. This is like one of the rare moments where actually, this is actually going to 
uh, raise people's views of institutions because they're actually going after somebody powerful, which never, never happens. Jail, Eric Holder walking free, and they see that there is a double justice system, one for people that support the regime and one that are opposed to it. You talk about the 87,000 IRS agents. Yes, it's a violent attack on the economic welfare of our middle class, but it's also an ability to police speech in America, because what does the IRS do? They decide who's a nonprofit. They decide tax deductibility. They decide who is a political organization, who is a charity, who can be involved in our elections, who can't be. This is an enormous... And they're way too freaking lenient with especially uh, Christian or Catholic institutions. But anyways. ...of our political system. It's, it's very frightening, yeah. I will tell you. Yeah, and it, it just highlights... This is about more than a former president. This is about the American people. Stephen Miller, you always put it into perspective well. I appreciate you being with us on Tucker. What? Thank you so much. All right, let's turn now to Matt what? Whitaker. He's the attack, uh, acting, or was the acting attorney general under Donald Trump, and he joins us now. Matt, I'm glad to have you with us. Hey, um, let's go into the, what would it need, Matt? Walk me through the process of accomplishing a search warrant for the FBI to execute a raid on a former president. Who would have to approve, and what type of burden would they have to shoulder on an evidentiary basis? Michael Cuomo says, ain't Fox News tired of doing damage audit. control for Trump? It seems more well, exhausting than, burden, than, re, than uh, retail work. And, and um, absolutely, I would think so, but it, have an crime it's, and then it's really easy to be a conservative. Pattern, very, very uh, easy. It's just all reactionary garbage. It's one note. Protect Trump at all costs, so just make up bullshit as you go along. It's, it's a very easy job. John Barlick says Dark Brandon is rising. Apparently. An officer of the law. But, you know, let's, let's take two steps back. To open a criminal investigation at all, you have to have predication. And so you, you jump through all those hurdles at the Department of Justice, and you end up then executing a search warrant. But, you know, these types of issues like executing a search warrant, arresting someone, and all those um, types of law enforcement activities obviously uh, put a, a, a cast a pale or cast a shadow on that individual that is now subject to those law enforcement actions. And in this case, I just think this is an outrageous expansion of the FBI's really, I don't know how else you say it, attack on Donald Trump for the last six years. These people are so... Matt, so I want to take you up on your invitation to back... Jesus Christ, shut the frig up. Uh, let me read more chats here. <clears throat> Real House Cat says, more hot air than the Hindenburg. Zoinks. Brett Taylor says, hey, David, off topic, but I wanted to give you a shout out. Thanks for your video. You do great work. Oh, or videos. Thank you. Thank you, Brett. Glad you enjoy it. By the way, I've been sick for like two months. I'm glad uh, it's not that obvious, but I've had like a serious cold for a long time. I probably have long COVID, actually. Just, uh, I don't know. I would expect that Chris Ray and Merrick Garland both signed off on the criminal investigation of Donald Trump. And that obviously is a big step. And, you know, both of them, uh, you know, fearing for their future, you know, are, are probably have some measure of conflict in this situation. But a typical investigation, an, an agent can go to a supervisor, you know, tell him what he has and make sure that there are reasonable investigative steps that can be taken based on an initial predication of that case, obviously in concert with a prosecutor like a U.S. attorney's office. Uh, but, you know, this type of case where you're going after a former president of the United States and possibly future president of the United States would involve the attorney general and the FBI director and, right. and, and senior officials at the highest levels. So I'm going to ask you to speculate here, Matt. You can decline if you would like, but I'm going to ask you to speculate. You know, we have listened to Chris Ray over the last several weeks or so, and in the last week at the very least, testify before Congress about the resources of the FBI, where and where he could not dedicate resources. We heard him asked about the Hunter Biden investigation, the Gretchen Whitmer investigation uh, against uh, violence against pro-life advocates and, or pro-abortion advocates at pro-life centers. He talked about essentially, Matt, the limited resources of the FBI and therefore prosecutorial discretion in where they choose to put their resources. So I'm curious, the FBI has chosen to devote resources to Donald Trump. Why in your estimation? What is this? Because he tried to steal the fucking election. Are you stupid? January 6th. Let, let's see Why how they, I, I want to see how he answers this. Of priorities. 
Well, Will, that's a great question. And obviously what you prioritize, you put resources towards. And if you had uh, many FBI agents at Mar-a-Lago today, that took away from other things that those uh, agents could be working on, including violent crime in our major cities. But, <laughs> but you're right. The Department of Justice and the FBI appear to be focusing a lot of resources. Why are they in Chicago? Why are they in Chicago arresting, uh, arresting uh, felons for violent crime? Here, you have a former president try to steal an election very clearly had planned like if you have watched any of this shit if you have seen any of what happened if you have seen the trump people that were that are still die hard republicans love trump but were forced to flip and discuss what actually happened jesus christ the 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 echo chamber these people create is just incredible how do you not view imagine this was hillary clinton tried to steal the election, or, or Obama tried to steal it for Hillary Clinton. Do you think they'd be sitting here and be like, the FBI could have been arresting violent criminals, but instead, why are they out there going after Hillary Clinton? I mean, this is a waste of time. Like, can you freaking imagine? And by the way, I would be consistent. I'd be like, yeah, throw their asses in jail. Anyone trying to steal a freaking election should be, <laughs> I think, investigated. Is that a crazy thing to say? These people are so stupid. I shouldn't say stupid. They're they're not dumb. They know they're lying. But just the this this tower of garbage they have to build. Like to go to the one of a, the super chats uh, question there about are they tired? This part I think would be tiring. Just like <laughs> the, the lengths you have to go to to put out this kind of garbage on a consistent basis. It, it is just amazing to me. But I don't know. I guess they figured this is how they make their money. This is how they get these uh, these TV spots, and they don't give they don't care what they have to say as long as they have that power, have that fame, have that money. But they could probably still get that if they weren't this this much of trash. I don't know. Occurred. Yeah, I, I would expect that we're not going to hear much from the Department of Justice. I can't imagine that FBI is used just to enforce the archives, uh, you know, authority to have the presidential records. They certainly didn't seem to care much about Hillary Clinton's record. Uh, Voice of the Emperor says so they should have brought in the 75th you know, Ranger Regiment to remind Florida its place. Baldazar says, do Canadians know, say pardon my Quebecois instead of pardon my French? Uh, no, I still say pardon my that. French. And Ryan Hartwell says, I would be more than happy to see Trump go to prison, not just for the January 6th stuff, but for violating the emoluments clause and felony tax evasion. There is so much, so much they can get him on. But the latter is not nearly as sexy as uh, or to mainstream media. Yeah, I agree. Jman G says, David, do you see the Axios article with Trump asking John Kelly why the U.S. generals wouldn't weren't more like the German generals during World War II? I did. Thank you for reminding me. I'll bring that up not the United States of America. Matt Whitaker, that's exactly what we've begun to hear. Banana Republic. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You've heard it mentioned several times. The hypocrisy, the perhaps not po hypocrisy, the partisan oh consistency God. on where resources are deployed is too obvious to ignore. Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, lied on a federal gun form. He also is on tape smoking crack hunter biden is not in the fucking government hunter biden did, was not the president hunter biden did not try to steal an election are these people fucking crazy i i don't understand i really don't get the obsession with hunter biden what I, like he has no power why does anybody care it's not like he's in the white house like the trump kids he's he's nowhere he's out you know, doing coke with a bunch of prostitutes. Like he's not, he's nowhere near power. Who gives a shit about Hunter Biden? You can say, oh yeah, he got a cushy job in the past because of his dad. Okay, yes, I agree. As do the vast majority of kids of politicians. Why is this a story? This is so insane. These people are insane. I, I cannot, I cannot believe this, like at least have a better argument than this. But it is so obvious. It is so obvious they are crazy. I don't even know what to say. They're, they're, they're nuts. Gray area there. And not only do they not raid Hunter, not only do they not arrest him, but no one expects them to. No one has any faith in the justice system. See, I think what we're dealing with today is, you know, RIP, FBI. It, it feels like it's over, that everybody has to understand 
it's there you know they're the partisan uh, militant wing of the uh, Biden administration and I would remind everybody they're struggling they're about struggling three hours ago will Joe Biden couldn't put on his sport coat he struggled he's not I don't think he's controlling things here and that's a question we got to ask I mean you can get to that what, who's who's calling the shots here another question I have who is this guy this guy is terrible like the the delivery is not you can tell he's really struggling to to try and make up uh you know his anger around this it, it just <laughs> this, this guy is terrible the uh the various uh uh administration their their wings their their departments against their enemies it is the most frightening thing okay let's They're put a pause on dipshit for a second this is from the new yorker it turned out that the generals had rules, standards, and expertise, not blind loyalty. The president's loud complaint to John Kelly one day was typical. Quote, you effing generals, why can't you be like the German generals? Which generals, Kelly asked? The German generals in World War II. Trump wanted his generals to be like Hitler's. So, <laughs> this is a great quote. Stop comparing Trump to Hitler, said everyone. Trump compares himself to Hitler. <laughs> Just, just insane. Um, I think there's a distrust now, an undeniable distrust among the American people for the institutions that survive beyond elections. And I think you're exactly right to point to the FBI. How do you explain? How do you explain the interest in Donald Trump, but more importantly, the lack of interest, Jerry, in right. potential corruption in the White House? And I'm going to use the word potential. Because allegations are designed to be investigated by the FBI. And in this case, what we have seen, and Ray said last week, well, you know, it's, it's, it's concerning that we haven't given that more attention. It's a problem that you called it disinformation. Not only did you decline to investigate, you what explained corruption? it away as Russian disinformation. Right. That, that's, that's a great point. Think about this. You, I've heard a lot of guests talk about Hillary Clinton's deleting the emails. Obviously, Donald Trump pointed that out. Joe, uh, Bill Clinton went to, you know, pedophile island. How many? Oh, my God. If you're angry about deleted emails or, or not even deleted emails, a different email server. Trump flushing documents down the fucking toilet. Like, and that's just like the, the tip of the iceberg with them. The, how can you bring that up? How, how can he bring... Bringing that, bringing Hillary's, you know, email server up only goes to showcase the obvious hip hypocrisy going on here with this. He doesn't even, he, he's not even worried. You know who's yeah. worried? Eric Trump, Eric Trump, Donald Trump Jr., anybody in Trump's universe, they're afraid of the 6 a.m. raid where they're in their boxer shorts and CNN's across the street. I guess Donald Trump was lucky. At least he wasn't in his underwear and, and, and with uh, That's know, what CNN I said. camera watching him come out of Mar-a-Lago. <laughs> At least he wasn't... Uh, didn't reach that point, but you know who knows what's next. Good point, sir. Well, I agree. Shortly, we'll be talking to members of the Trump. He's family, privileged. That's why he was not rated at two a.m. tonight, Jerry. Thank you so much, Jerry Kelly. Thanks, Will. Thank you, Will. We got to get you off, Jerry. You're making you're making too much sense now. Got to get you off. Got to get someone else in here. What fascist is next? Went to Mar-a-Lago and looked in every single office. His safe, the former president's safe, and grabbed documents and boxes without going through them on the property. So it oh left God. the property with those boxes. The source said the agents took the documents to go through later once they left Mar-a-Lago. So would they rather the FBI set up shop in Mar-a-Lago and just stay there? And, and <laughs> that's now their new offices where they go through all the documents one by one? What the fuck is he talking about? Donald Trump joins us now. Uh, Lara, thank you for being on the program with us tonight. I was one of the Trumps. Um, have you spoken to the former president? How is he doing? What is the attitude of the family? I have spoken to my father-in-law, and I, I got to tell you, you know, he's as shocked as anybody. I think for someone and anyone, quite frankly, who loves this country and believes in America, this should shake you to your core. What has happened today? This is a very clear demarcation in the history of America. Uh, never before, as many of your guests have already talked about, Will, have we seen something like this happen, where an unannounced raid by the FBI is conducted on a former president of the United States. Think about this. If How many former presidents have tried to steal an election? I guess that would be where I would go with that question. To anybody in America, the, the bottom line here is that 
these uh, documents that have been in question have been, everybody's been cooperating. Everybody from my father-in-law's team has been cooperating with the FBI, with any authority that asked for anything up until now. And there was no need to make such a big scene to do something this insane, quite frankly, um, to a former president. But I think everybody clearly knows, Will, what is going on here. This is about weaponizing the justice system as it has been so many times in the past against somebody who you politically do not like. They detest Donald Trump, not just on the Democrat side, but the general establishment, because he's not one of them, because he doesn't play their game. They are terrified he's going to announce any day that he's running for president in 2024. And this is a very convenient way to just throw a little more mud on Donald Trump. I will say it's true they hate him. The establishment hates him. That is true. Also true, he tried to steal an election. Okay, <laughs> so why, why is it wrong to go after someone who broke the law? Hmm, I don't know. Not many, uh, not many good excuses here. And what? Absolutely nothing. They've been trying to shove January 6th down everybody's throat in an effort to get people to care about that and think that's the most important thing in the world. That hasn't worked for them yet. So here they are heading into a midterm and heading into a presidential election season coming up where they know they have no hope on the Democrat side. They have nothing positive. To Trump show isn't on the ballot. The American who people. gives a shit? So what do you do? You try to take out a guy who hasn't even announced that he's running yet, but they're terrified of him. Oh, my God. These people the, are the Democrat these people sure. are deranged in the general establishment. Laura, uh, you've spoken to your Byron says law. now onto Trump Tower. information of anybody we've spoken with. Tonight. Let's hope. Do AIM says, sorry, I can't give more, David. Oh, thank you, AIM. No worries. D's nut says 20 or D's nuts. Twenty twenty four says, well, 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 if it isn't the consequences of his own actions. <laughs> From the White House. Look, my father in law is anybody FBI. Been around him a lot. Sorry, Byron says FBI gonna bust well, in pipes open. Clippings, uh, Kevin Levine says yeah, reminds me of Watergate. Every authority will to take from Justice Ricketts says, Love this country. You know, again, he's been get a pass to be a criminal now. Step of the way with the people that have, have questioned any of this, and, and I know people have brought it up before. But, you know, look at Hillary Clinton, the 33,000 emails that she just deletes that are completely gone and nobody bats an eyelash about it. Donald Trump takes some documents that he had every right to take that every president does. Wait. They take antiques, uh, you know, like Hillary Clinton took out of the White House and paintings, apparently. Uh, but that is what he believes. And that's what, uh, you know, I think is at the bottom of all. This. Wait, 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 wait. So you're saying Trump did what Hillary did, which isn't even true. But Trump did what Hillary did. And what Hillary did was really bad. But what, what, when Trump did, it was okay. <laughs> they got to get some better guests on. This is terrible. Tan, he's the former White House chief strategist. He has been targeted relentlessly by the January 6th committee. He joins us now by phone to react to news of the FBI raid on Mar-a-Lago. Steve, um, happy to have you on the program, have you by phone here tonight. What's your immediate reaction? Well, well, you know, I gave this speech, the keynote address at the Kettleman's Ball CPAC on Friday night. I said, we're at war. We're at a political and ideological war. And they've obviously weaponized the, the Justice Department. Uh, and this had to be approved by Ryan Klain. This had to go up to the White House to be approved. Absolutely. Anybody saying it didn't is, is a liar. This had to go up the chain of command through Merrick Garland to Ryan Klain at least. And, and, and Ray and Oh, the, look, chief, the chief fascist. This cool. is about pure power politics. They're absolutely scared to death about Trump. They can't be. Mark Elias, the guy who laid out the entire effort to steal the 2020 election, remember the Transition Integrity Project, he's tweeting right now all the U.S. codes about documents and they can have, you know, make sure you can't run for federal office. All right. If, if he's going to be lying about the election, I'm not going to be, uh, you know, allowing that to go. Let's, uh, let's see if there's anything new here. One of the most recent articles is from the New York Times. We'll get back to this trash in a second. I, I just Steve Bannon is too he's too much. All right. So in case you're joining this late, uh, Mar-a-Lago was raided, unannounced. He had broken open a safe and account. Oh, sorry, the FBI had broken open his safe. 
The search, according to multiple people familiar with the investigation, appeared to be focused on material that Mr. Trump had brought with him to Mar-a-Lago, his private club and residence when he left the White House. Those boxes contained many pages of classified documents, according to a person familiar with their contents. Mr. Trump delayed returning 15 boxes of material requested by officials with the National Archives for many months, only doing so when there became a threat of action being taken to retrieve them. Because Trump is used to getting away with everything, so it's not until there's actually a real threat to him that he's going to obey. The FBI would have needed to convince a judge that it had probable cause that a crime had been committed to get a search warrant and proceeding with a search on a former president's home would almost surely have required sign off from top officials at the bureau and the justice department. A spokesperson for the FBI declined to comment and just department officials did not initially respond to request for comment. Mr. Trump was not at his home in Florida at the time of the raid and was in the New York area. Trump, who campaigned for president, Hillary Clinton's practice of maintaining a private email server for government-related messages while she was Secretary of State, was known throughout his term to rip up official material that was intended to be held for presidential archives. One person familiar with his habits said that included classified material that was shredded in his bedroom and elsewhere. And today we saw pictures of uh, torn up documents in the toilet that I guess did not flush down the first time. Quote, after working with and cooperating with the relevant government agencies, this unannounced raid on my home was not necessary or appropriate, Mr. Trump said, maintaining it was an effort to stop him from running for president in 2024. Such an assault could only take place in a in the broken third world countries. That explains why, uh, what's that guy's name? Bongino came out talking about how this is a third world country because he was just taking notes from Trump. They even broke into my safe. Trump did not share any details about what the FBI agents said they were searching for. The search took place on Monday morning. A person familiar with it said, although Trump claimed agents were still there many hours later. All right. Uh, after working with, after working, cooperating with the relevant government agencies, this unannounced, we, said, we read that already. Why are they repeating the same quotes? Oh, yeah, worth pointing out here. The current FBI director, Christopher A. Ray, was appointed by Mr. Trump. So, for any of these uh, dipshits on here, the guy in charge, appointed by Mr. Trump. And we all know, Mr. Trump only hires the best people. So, because we know Trump only hires the best people, we can be assured that this was the correct thing to do. So, thank you, Mr. Trump, for only hiring the best people realizing that you broke the law and that you must be raided. So as you heard tonight, now the president of the United States, the former president of the United States home in Mar-a-Lago has been raided by FBI agents, upwards of 30 agents, broke into his safe, took boxes of documents away, not discovering them, not going through them on premises, but taking them away for further analysis. We do not have information at this time as to why, what is the legal or evidentiary basis as to what is the investigation and the raid into Donald Trump. But for now, we turn to Fox's Shannon Bream for a legal analysis of the situation unfolding tonight. Uh, Shannon, we get great facts to have now? you with me. Um, let's take this from a legal perspective. As you look at what's happened and what has occurred, what's your takeaway? Well, I can't wait to see the warrant. I think everybody wants to know the underpinnings of this, as you've talked about on the show. And, Will, you are a gifted lawyer and know this just as well as anybody. Um, you've talked us through what would happen. I mean, this doesn't just happen overnight. You go through a judge. There is an internal decision-making process uh, at the DOJ, at the FBI, in which um, people have to talk over the possibilities of what could happen here. And, you know, it's so rare because there's never been an indictment of a former president, a criminal indictment of a former president. And who knows whether we'll get to that place. Um, but this is part of a case. This is part of what you would do is go get information and go get the things that you would claim are evidence. Um, it's interesting, if, uh, as what Laura Trump has been saying, um, I'd be interested to see if the DOJ and FBI also believe, um, as she said, he's been cooperating. He's been working with them. Um, they may likely have, have suggested otherwise. They may believe otherwise, because to go to a judge and get the underpinnings that you need for this warrant to have someone sign off on, um, they probably had to make some kind of allegation. I would guess that the president has not 
been cooperating with them, at least not in their definition of cooperation. Look at how they tiptoe um, around this. Oh, my God. These, um, other raids that you've talked about, um, the, you know, the arrest of, um, you know, Steve Navarro and, and some of the others and, and how, or excuse me, Peter Navarro, how some of these things have come together. There's always the political and optics um, that you have to consider in this as well. I think any DOJ or FBI, any administration is going to want to. Hey, be Roller Dragon. Yeah, I'm good. I was just sick today, and my my kid. Well, well I am sick now still. But my kid was sick. I had to watch him. That's why I could not be on the watch list. Unfortunately, that was supposed to be on. Or that we cannot trust in them. We as Americans want to have faith in them that they're going to go after criminal wrongdoing wherever they find it. So um, this FBI has clearly made, and this Attorney General has made the calculation that they think they have enough to move forward and risk the political optics of this because as you know and i know you've discussed earlier on the show there is this you know conversation about not pursuing um indictments and things so close to an election that they would have uh, an impact in a way that could unseat or that could um, upset the political balance so they've walked through those considerations and felt this close to a midterm election uh that they are justified in moving forward that's all we can assume at this point what, what do you, Shannon, help me understand what you mean by, by moving forward. So what we know now is like, that they have rated the... This is how they have to on Fox News. She can't give her opinion because her opinion is so obviously, some that obviously he has a reason to be rated. So she's like, from their perspective, from the FBI's perspective, I guess he was lying. Uh, from their perspective, they had to rate him. Not my perspective, not Fox News, They're the FBI's perspective. Well, normally you would say uh, in a case that if... And to be fair, I mean, I guess she's not an opinion person, so maybe that is her job. But but that, this is the only way they get any kind of facts out is they have to dance around the issue. They can't just be straight up with people because it's going to hurt their feelings. Uh, the next many, many several steps. This is a former president. This is not something that has happened before. So clearly they feel like they have the strength of whatever they've alleged and whatever they've ascertained so far in this investigation to move forward. Now, we've been considering this in the context of the January 6th investigations and hearings. But what we're hearing tonight, the indications seem to be this is not about that, that this is about presidential records and the maintaining of them after someone has left office. So it can be a different thing if you're talking about indicting a president, a former president, for something that happened while he was president. That's kind of the conversation we've been having if this is connected to January 6th. But tonight it sounds like a different conversation, like they may be talking about pursuing something against, against the president for something they believe that happened after his time in office and what he did with records after he left Washington and was no longer the president of the United States. So those are two kind of different tracks there. Um, but you got to think because of all of this, so it's the Al Capone method, basically. they wouldn't move forward unless they had some confidence, some level uh, that they have at least the basic um, makings for what you would pursue in this kind of case, because otherwise right. it, it does get into the optics of where we've seen all of these other cases where it seems like a hammer is being used instead of a fly swatter in some of these cases. Um, only they inside the DOJ and FBI know tonight. Yeah, if this were all there were to it. That would be a hard image for the FBI to overcome. You would have to think they calculated a next step. So this is not. Uh, let me get their the story. Here. Shannon Bream, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Security monitor lizard says, "God forbid someone tries to preserve democracy." John Labens says, "May have found Ivanka's blue dress, smoking gun." Air Force says, "Sending thoughts and prayers to the Trumps." She's a columnist the New York Post. She joins thoughts and prayers to put this raid into context. Miranda. Good evening, Will. It's pretty incredible, and you can only wonder um, how, how this is going to play with the Hunter Biden. Uh, we know that the investigation in Delaware is about to come to fruition. There's probably a plea deal uh, going to happen. Uh, will that happen in the shadow of this sort of square up? Sorry, uh, let's what get we this. Do know is that uh, these documents that were check this out. Reporter tries to ask Trump for his reaction. No response. Mr. Trump, can we get your reaction to the raid? Mr. Trump, can we get your reaction to the raid, sir? There you see the former president. Mr. Trump. All right. How about that? Let's see what else this guy's been collecting. This is a good follow, by the way. If you're on Twitter, it's uh, ACYN. Him and uh, Aaron Rupar are uh, pretty good for clips. We saw Lara Trump earlier. Lara Trump, whatever the hell her name is. Uh, 
He's just doing Fox News? Okay, we saw this then. <clears throat> Related to any of the other seven matters that they seem to be trying to, to trip President Trump up on, like, you know, a list of electors or something to do with January 6th. If you find that other evidence, you can use it in a new, <clears throat> in a new investigation. So um, if that is the case, th that is just so appalling and it just strengthens the American people's uh, basically prejudice or suspicion that the FBI is just the secret police of the Democratic Party. It's a terrible thing for America and I, I think it's going to backfire terribly on the Democrats because uh, it's just going to rally support behind Donald Trump because no matter what people think of Donald Trump, they know that this is an outrage to be raiding what? Uh, our former no, president. No, not no, no, people do not agree either. with you, lady. He is the like, like Trump supporters wouldn't come out regardless for him. Ugh. Again, alternate reality. I want to check out this, uh, this Newsmax clip, which is apparently crazy. So let's see, let's see what this is about. Mark Wayne Mullen. I would push back a little bit on that. Democrats are a different party than the Republican Party, just the mindset. Democrats are used to following the leader. Uh, they get behind somebody and they push and they'll all walk off the cliff together. They're all headed that way. They've done it multiple times. Look what's happening with ACA and look what's happening right now with the red wave coming. Republicans are more independent thinkers. Um, yeah. We're independent minded. So it's almost like trying to herd, herd, uh, herd cats. You just can't do it. And so if we had a party structure that was trying to move the same way that the Democrats are doing, we would stop. There's enough independent thinking Republicans that say, hold on a second, hold on. Um, mm -mm. This yeah. isn't what I signed up for. Uh, and I truly believe that with all my heart. We're just a different party. Now, is there. You know, this is a lie because Democrats win elections when turnout is high. Republicans win elections when turnout is low, meaning Republicans come out as lemmings regardless. They come out and vote regardless. They come out and vote, and that's a strength for their side. But it's also, it showcases how this guy is full of shit. There is a lot more diversity of thought on the left because people will not come out and vote for you. A lot of people won't come out and vote for you unless they feel like you're actually good. That is not the case on the right. So... Right, that right there, this entire statement is complete bullshit, complete bullshit. And to be fair, it hurts Democrats, but you can't blame people for, you know, expecting their government to actually deliver for them and to, and to actually represent them and not simply represent, you know, uh, campaign contributors. So I understand why voters, you know, don't come out, which is why it's on the Democratic Party to deliver and get people out to vote. That said, when it comes to the midterms, I think a lot of people are going to come out simply because of what's happening with abortion rights. Um, you're seeing now a lot of polling shift in direction to favor Democrats, which normally would not happen right now with historically low approval rating for Joe Biden. Uh, he's done, you know, he's done a couple of things, but very little in terms of what he actually promised. But very low approval rating. Democrats were expected to get, you know, swept in the midterms, just destroyed. And then abortion rights got taken away. And people really saw the GOP for what they are. These far, uh, far right, fascist, theocratic extremists. And people are, you know, they hit their limit when they see something like that. When, when, they, when they lose their rights, it wakes people up. So a lot of people are going to come out and vote who I think would not have voted anyway, or would not have voted if that had not happened. But uh, again, a lot of speculation right now, obviously, we're going to see. But that's my feeling. Potentially a fishing expedition. Shannon Breen said they have to have their next steps in mind, whatever it is, I think something is very clear. The burden of proof is going to be incredibly high on the American institutions because the electorate, a large percentage of the electorate, are looking at this with a great amount of jaundiced skepticism. Uh, Miranda, great to talk to you this evening. You too, Will. All right, you're looking there on your screens at new pictures of former President Trump leaving Trump Tower in New York City tonight. They were on your screen just a moment ago. As the rouge? sun has set in New York City. We turn now uh, to Joe Kent for reaction. He's a former Army Special Forces, and he's running for Congress in the state of Washington. Joe, it's great to have you with us tonight. Um, year five, I believe we are year six. Basically, from before Donald Trump's election to tonight, 
We have seen investigation after investigation and allegation after allegation. Do you think tonight, what we are looking at now, will be any different than the outcome of the past six years? Or will it simply be another illustration of the power of an allegation? Well, it has to be different than what we've seen before because we've seen the complete and total weaponization of our national security <laughs> state. You, you mentioned how this all began. They even broke it by safe. Sham hoax, and we saw the national security kid. state at the uh, at the highest levels weaponized against President Trump and his campaign and throughout his administration. And now with the narrative coming from January 6th, and make no mistake, this is where the narrative really, really was fortified to turn these potent tools against not just President Trump, but many of his top uh, advisors, people who weren't even on the ground January 6th, and then folks that were put away, uh, thrown into essentially political prisons without any kind of due process. And now the national security state continues to be on the hunt against President Trump or and even all the way down to you know parents that show up to school board meetings. So we have to realize that we're at war when we take back the House in 2023, bringing the national security state to heel must be our top priority. Any Republican who is not ready for that fight is unfit for duty. You know, Joe, in the, I've, I've mentioned this several I'm like zone. I, I'm not even, I missed half of what he said because I was reading Twitter, but uh, I, I don't know. And, and we heard earlier on the program, it's not simply corruption. It's just what we're watching unfold in America isn't limited to, as you mentioned, the national security state. It's not limited to law enforcement. You, I think, very aptly, Joe, pointed out school board meetings, which, of course, the DOJ classified those parents as domestic terrorists. But, but beyond that, censorship within big technology, it, it's hard, I would imagine, for an American citizen who doesn't subscribe to the current thing, whatever that, that political philosophy may be driving it, but whatever is the current thing, to think there is anything even resembling a fair playing field in America. No, not at all. And, you know, I, I... Wouldn't not going after a powerful individual who tried to steal an election, wouldn't that showcase an unfair playing field? Wouldn't going after that person showcase a more fair playing field? The contradictions are endless in their commentary, but the viewers, their diehard viewers don't catch it. They don't care. Um, and they've been more critical of Trump more recently. They've had segments Fox News has of interviewing conservative voters saying they would rather, you know, Ron DeSantis, but they're going to rally around their dear leader in a time like this and just make up bullshit going after him, but it's a total full frontal assault. They're going after every single one of us. So we really have to start electing Republicans who know what time it is, because our one hope of saving this republic is going to be fought out on the floor of the Oversight Committee. And we have to not just bring these people to heel, but we have to start bringing them to full account. And you know, I mean, criminal charges too, not just, you know, sound clips for how we're really going to take them on that turn into fundraising asks. We really have to start going after these people and taking away their power. One last question for you, Joe, what? you're running for office, so let's just cut to the heart of the matter. This is politics. What do you think this does to Donald Trump's candidacy were he to run in 2024? Well, I think we all know that President Trump is more than likely going to run, and they're going to keep coming at him. So what we have to do is we have to get unified. The Republicans, the conservatives, the America First movement, we have to see what the other side is doing. The other side is 100 percent in lockstep. They are unified. We have to get that ex the exact same way. We just fought a really hard primary throughout the entire country. So this is fascist shit right here. Let me get some comments. Lawrence Lowe says Alex Jones needs to go to jail. Now America's biggest jerk. Now America's biggest jerk life just might be fair. Yeah, I mean, I want to see where this Alex Jones stuff goes. Um, they now have his text messages. The committee does. See if uh, anything comes out of that. Christo says, Dark Brandon rises. <laughs> I've been seeing a few of those comments. Uh, Photog Mike says, So I see Candace Owens and Marjorie Green." Our secret abolitionists calling for defunding the FBI now. Yeah, I saw uh, Marjorie Greene's uh, tweet about defunding the police or defunding the FBI. I mean, if this is what does it. <laughs> this have to be approved. I think that Attorney General uh, Merrick Garland almost certainly signed off on this. It's hard to imagine a decision of this magnitude would be made without his knowledge and approval. 
Uh, he hasn't recused himself, and so that assumption, I think, is well fun, uh, founded. I mean, the news accounts indicate that this is not about January 6th, but about the Presidential Records Act. And the National Archivist, under that act, can ask the Attorney General to intervene when someone is not complying, including a former president, by turning over material. We know that material was taken previously two months ago. Now, putting all of that together, we're still speculating as to what the federal judge signed off here uh, as probable cause. Here's the thing. Better Call Saul is on in about eight minutes, so <laughs> I'm not staying for this. Um, I'm going to go watch Better Call Saul. So let's uh, finish this up, maybe get some last chats in here, and uh, I'll be on my, my merry way. Having a, having a good sleep tonight, unless my child wakes me up five times again, which is likely to happen. But apart from that, I will go to bed happy with uh, this news and with... Um, Trump getting raided. Or sorry, I mean, with this news and with Better Call Saul. Yeah. Yeah. Just a few more minutes. Law Gnomes says, I wish Dems were half as progressive and unified as Fox pretends they are. I know. They, the right always generates this fake version of, of uh, well, what they call as the left. Um, but like they think, you know, AOC and Nancy Pelosi are like, you know, tight and they're working together and, and getting shit passed, uh, to destroy Republicans or something. I don't, I don't even, <laughs> whatever, you know, mythology that they, they uh, create at the heart of it is this complete fiction that there's this unified left when clearly, as I said earlier, for Democrats to win elections, turnout has to be high. And that is usually not the case. So that shows you right there that the issue is getting a unified left. And part of that issue, of course, is having a candidate that actually represents people on a mass scale and not just your typical, you know, corporate tool. But whatever. They, they have these, these fake versions of, of what Democrats are. And it's like, you know, Joe Biden is socialist or... He's an authoritarian or something. Uh, it's so, like, it's so beyond stupid that it, it showcases how weak Democrats actually are because they are nowhere near that. It also shows you what Democrats could be doing with their power. I mean, they call you all these names anyways. Might as well live up to them. Might as well actually try to do something. Might as well actually try to fight for, you know, the working class. But obviously, you know, there's interests at play that, prevent that from happening but if it was just purely about politics and strategy they should be going much harder against republicans who clearly break the law uh fairly regularly uh, actually and that's well documented i mean trump is you know a extreme example of that but man this shit goes on with these people all the freaking time like what happened to matt gates what happened to all that shit we just kind of like evaporated. We stopped talking about that. Anyways, I got to get off because I got to watch the show. So. So I'm gone. All right. Thank you all for showing up for uh, this this amazing, amazing news. Some positivity. Though, let's be clear. Nothing may come of this as we are used to. Nothing coming of anything. But uh, that said, it's nice to see him get rated. So. A little happy moment in an otherwise very, very dark time. That said, go watch Better Call Saul, okay? All right. See y'all later. Goodbye.